A Great Escape Royal Wedding Source reveals an exhausted Prince Harry and Meghan enjoyed just a few drinks at their rowdy star-studded reception before they snuck off to get some rest. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's private wedding reception may have been a party for the ages, but the exhausted Duke and Duchess of Sussex reportedly snuck off before it officially ended. For the royal couple, their wedding day started bright and early on Saturday, with Meghan getting up at about 6 in the morning. After saying I do, Harry, 33, and Meghan, 36, had not one, but two receptions. However, Us Weekly reports that the newlyweds didn't make it until the end of their evening reception, which was hosted by Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall at Frogmore House, a royal residence in Windsor. They let themselves have a few drinks, then they were ready to get back for some rest, a source told Us Weekly. After a nearly 18-hour day, the newly minted Duke and Duchess of Sussex were likely exhausted, but their early departure doesn't mean the party wasn't a great time. It got rowdier as the night went on, the source said of the lavish affair. Around 200 guests joined the newlyweds at the private reception, which was a was a star-studded occasion filled with Hollywood glamour. The lively event featured a house music DJ and concluded with a fireworks display outside an historic 17th century venue. There have even been claims that there was a DJ slot from wedding guest at Elba. The reception is also said to have featured a naughty speech from best man Prince William and a thanks from Meghan to the royals for welcoming her in. Meghan giving a speech in itself was a break of tradition, with Prince William and Kate Middleton's wedding in 2011 only having speeches from Harry, Charles and Kate's father Michael, but not the Duchess of Cambridge. The dinner party at Frogmore House in Windsor Great Park came after a multicultural and U.S.-influenced wedding featuring an astonishing host of Hollywood guests including George Clooney, Oprah Winfrey and the Beckhams, the likes of which Britain's royals and the millions watching have never seen before. George attended the ceremony and party with his wife, Amal, and sources revealed to Entertainment Tonight the 57-year-old Ocean's Eleven star was playing bartender at the bash while also promoting his own brand. In a hilarious insight to the most coveted party of the year, it was claimed George hopped behind the bar and poured shots for everyone at the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's royal wedding reception. He was determined that everyone had a good time at the after-party and so made sure the drinks were flowing when everyone took to the dance floor. George hopped behind the bar and was actually bartending for a bit. He poured Casamigos drinks and shots and got everyone dancing, a source said. Meanwhile, tennis star Serena Williams, 36, showed off her athletic abilities while playing beer pong. The popular drinking game, in which players throw table tennis balls into cups of beer which other guests then have to drink, was one of many U.S. influences at the wedding. One insider revealed that Serena Williams played beer pong like it was tennis, The Sun reports. The tennis legend came prepared for sporting action as she paired her floor-length floral Valentino gown with a pair of sneakers for the Frogmore House reception. It has also been reported that James Corden set up a dance-off between Prince Harry, his brother William, and his father Charles at the royal wedding reception. The couple's first dance was to Land of a Thousand Dances by Wilson Pickett a funk classic that got the evening going before the other guests joined in. James, 39, who has enjoyed boozy nights out with Harry in Mayfair, provided entertainment at the exclusive after-party at Frogmore. He refereed an unexpected dance-off between the princes which the new Duchess of Sussex and her mother, Doria Ragland, also joined in. Earlier in the day, Prince Harry and Meghan said I do at Street, George's Chapel Windsor Castle as people watched from around the world. Meghan chose acclaimed British designer, Claire Waite Keller, the first female artistic director at the historic French fashion house Givenchy, to design her dress. She also wore a Queen Mary diamond bandeau tiara, loaned to her by the Queen. On the steps of the chapel Meghan asked her new husband discreetly, do we kiss? And Harry whispered yeah before passionately planting one on her lips. Outside Street, George's Chapel, more than 100,000 fevered well-wishers gathered in glorious British sunshine and cheered the couple as they started their new married life in the Grand Ascot Landau carriage. Meghan waved and smiled to the crowds and said wow to her new husband while, in his inimitable style, he said back, I'm ready for a drink now. 
as the newlyweds were swept through Windsor greeting huge crowds waving union flags the VIP guests were taken up to the castle for a lavish lunch and drinks hosted by the Queen. Guests praised the relaxed atmosphere and diverse feel. Sir Elton John, who sang at Princess Diana's funeral in 1997, performed at the lunchtime reception hosted by the Queen in a poignant nod to Harry's late mother, who died when he was only 12. For the evening reception at Frogmore House, Meghan changed into an equally elegant gown designed by Stella McCartney. The bespoke lily white high neck gown was made of silk crepe, while her aquazura shoes were silky satin with soles painted baby blue. Her hair, styled by George Northwood, was in a relaxed updo, with loose strands tucked behind her ears amid a breeze. She was spotted wearing a large aquamarine cocktail ring on her right hand which once belonged to Harry's mother. A double-decker coach full of guests arrived at the entrance to Frogmore House for the evening reception at 7.15 p.m. The coach had arrived from Calworth Park Hotel in Ascot, where Princes Harry and William spent the night before the wedding. Meanwhile, Prince Harry and Meghan travelled in a silver-blue open-top Jaguar-E-type Concept Zero on their way to the English country house which stands in the home park of Windsor Castle and is part of the Crown Estate. It is only open to individuals on three days of the year. The E-Type, which had been converted to an electric vehicle, previously belonged to Jamiroquai musician Toby Grafty Smith, who died last year at the age of 46 after a six-year battle with cancer.